today I wanted to show you guys a simple keto bread recipe that I make at home, so stay tuned for that. For today's keto bread, we're going to be using almond flour, cheddar, ham, we also have a green onion scallion, four eggs, and almond milk. I've cracked all four eggs into my mixing bowl and I'm going to scramble them well. Now I'm measuring out my almond flour to 280 grams on my scale. Once I've got that, I'm going to slowly mix it into my scrambled eggs and it should form into a sticky batter. Then I'm gonna add in my almond milk. I measured six and a half ounces and just slowly work that into the sticky batter so that it just comes into a more smoother, workable batter. And then I like to add the cheddar cheese because it adds a little bit of saltiness to the bread. Now I'm finally slicing green onion to add to my batter. I like the flavor combination of the ham, cheese, and green onion, but you can always um, do this without it. Next, I'm gonna dice up some deli ham and I'm going to chop them into fairly big chunks. And I like to add some kind of protein to the bread because I feel like it adds more firmness and it's going to add more protein. Once I've worked all those ingredients into my mixing bowl, I'm just going to grease my loaf pan with um, just a little bit of oil and then I'm going to line it with parchment paper so that it's easier to pull out once the bread is done baking. The last step that I like to do is add a little bit of butter on top of the batter and I find that it not only adds that buttery flavor but it also makes a nice crust on the sides and edges of the bread. You want to preheat and set your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and it's going to roughly take about 30 to 35 minutes so just check on it around that time. Just out of the oven, just going to let it cool down. The center should be pretty firm. It's really hot right now, so I'm not going to try to cut it or take it out of the loaf pan. I'm just going to let it cool down and just get it to set before I cut it and break it down and put it in my fridge. So I didn't want to mention this because um, like I thought maybe it's it's like too sad but then I thought also this is like the reality of these type of situations like with um, you know elderly diabetes and like when I took my dad out for his walk with my sister um, I didn't record it because at the time like he was quite sad when he went walking with us and he had mentioned that, you know, he never thought he would be in that type of situation where he would not be able to walk on his own, like, because he had to hold on to us um, just to walk down the driveway and, in general, like, to do his exercise. And, you know, I I told him, you know, it's fine, like, we, we can hold you up, it's fine, you know, but... It's just like one of those things that, that that is the reality, like when you don't take care of your diabetes, you know, and when you're too old to, when it's too far gone and you get left in that 
state like of your body i don't really know what more i can do for him other than to like help him with his diet and try to still encourage him to like keep movement because that's pretty much what it all says like online like you just need to move and like use that sugar that's that extra sugar that's in your body and I think it's it's also like important to share like those kind of sad realities just because like a lot of a lot of times we'll just be pretty avoidant of you know dealing with the the issue because affects their joy in life but from what I realized after seeing my dad and how he feels just sad at the fact that he can't walk on his own without falling or injuring himself like I feel like that's more sad you know um but yeah I mean that's the reality and hopefully you know he has a way to at least like walk on his own just you know without injuring himself like that would be the next goal I have for him and just to try to get him to regulate his sugar by his diet but little little things here and there I'm just hoping that my you know preparing food for him and like trying to share what I read up on all this with him is is really all that I can do at this point so I'm just crossing my fingers that there is some improvement on his next blood work in in November uh, yeah so take care of your health because in the end <laughs> that is your wealth your health is your wealth <laughs> like honestly you know it, it's just something that you need to take care of while you're young so that it's not as hard when you're old that's my message so well actually i have a very little jalapeno cream cheese because harrison got a little snacky but this is so good with cream cheese just put a little schmear on top Mm, and the scallions is good, Paul. I didn't put scallions in it last time, but it really comes through. Not bad. This is the first time I'm trying it with the ham, but the ham might be better than the rotisserie chicken. Show you bits of ham, scallion, you can still see the cheddar cheese in there. So, I'm gonna pack this up. Maybe tomorrow or maybe the next day. I'm gonna give like maybe half of this to my dad. And the other half I'm gonna keep at home. But when we're ready to use it, I'll show you what I make.
thanks for watching you guys and i hope you get to try out this recipe let me know in the comments if you do and i'll see you next time bye